Solo Flawless Warlords Rune Dungeon Guide specifically for Titan. I'm doing this one in a bit of a different format compared to my Warlock and Hunter one, so just let me know if you like the difference. Um, in my opinion, this is definitely the easiest class to solo flawless this dungeon on. And when I say easiest, I don't necessarily mean fastest from like a DPS perspective, um, but it's definitely the safest. If, if you're someone who wants to spend as little time as possible practicing this, definitely go with Titan. Um, it is definitely the safest, easiest to survive, easiest to get through the phases, easiest to deal damage, all that jazz. So I'm just going to talk through the builds that I use for each encounter as we get to each encounter. And then I'm going to talk through like one or two phases of each encounter to show you exactly where you should stand, how to do all the mechanics, uh, how, best ways to deal damage, all that jazz, and hopefully make this guide pretty quick for you. So already at the first boss build I'm recommending for this one is any solar energy weapon of your choice, whatever one you like. I love this SMG, Kalos Mini Tool, but up to you. Bonus points if it has incandescent as well. Um, you're also going to go with Dragon's Breath, new exotic rocket launcher. You'll notice I do not have the catalyst. You do not need to have the catalyst. Doesn't make any difference. Probably a little bit better if you do, but obviously I don't have it here and you're going to see that we get by just fine. As far as your kinetic goes, I'm going with the scatter signal. It's the new seasonal fusion rifle. It's pretty easy to get the craftable version. Just do a couple runs of coil or something like that, but this is the perfect role that I have it crafted. So you can go ahead and take a picture, copy those perks on screen. If you can't get this, you can go with something like Riptide uh, or really any decent hard hitting fusion rifle that's good for boss damage, up to you. As far as my subclass goes, we're going Solar Titan for the first one. We're going uh, Pyrogale, as I'm sure you saw, for a big chunk of damage for DPS phases, along with Burning Maul. And then for our subclass, got Towering, Strafe, you can do whatever jump you want, um, Throwing Hammer, Healing Grenade, and then I've got Roaring Flame, Soul Invictus, and then for uh fragments we got empyrean so we can use our solar weapon to extend our radiant and restoration buffs keep in mind we can get restoration from a healing grenade or we can get it from our soul invictus sunspots super easy to get we got torches so we can get radiant whenever we hit something with our throwing hammer we got ashes which is really important to help dragon's breath get more ignitions off so it reloads faster and does more damage and then the fourth uh fragment's kind of up to you i went solace but you could do like sinjin or something like that if you wanted to um i just like solace because it gives me a little bit more wiggle room to get my buffs stacking when i initially acquire them um before they disappear and i can stack them within period as far as mods go this is what i've got set up two harmonic siphons and a heavy finder Heavy handed to impact inductions for my chest. For this boss specifically, I'm going triple solar resistances to help deal with the boss damage. And then I've got a solar surge, harmonic scavenger, and innervation, and then reaper time dilation. If you have enough energy to get something in here, you'll go ahead and throw a bomb run. As far as artifact goes, you don't have to have these, but like, you know, if you're high enough, might as well. Solo operative, razor precision, revitalizing blast, heart of the flame, flint striker, kindling trigger and from whence you came and wishing to bean are the important ones these don't really matter that much um definitely stay away from argent ordinance because you're obviously always stowing dragon's breath right after you shoot it so if you shoot dragon's breath and then stick it in your pocket you're not really getting much of a damage buff from argent ordinance and then you're just wasting all of your armor charge stacks that could be going towards solar weapon search so that's the loadout that's all your mods that's all that stuff let me show you how to beat this boss this one you can do if you do it super optimally uh, optimally in like three phases pretty easy but uh yeah we're gonna start out by getting our radiant restoration buffs you can do that at any time literally by just killing something with a throwing hammer because you get radiant for hitting the enemy with your throwing hammer and then you get restoration for standing in the sun spot and then all you have to do is kill enemies with your solar weapon solar smg or your sun spots or your throwing hammer anything like that and you'll extend those buffs through unbroken period once you start capturing the totems you just wiggle a little bit back and forth you have um restoration running while you're doing this so you're pretty safe it's pretty impossible for the enemies to kill you if you're taking on a lot of fire you can go ahead and like throw a barricade down it makes things a little safer um once you get the totems i like to go rocket insta pop super throw the hammer down switch to my fusion two shots and then another rocket and then i basically do four shots of fusion in between rockets so one two i have to reload so I'll maybe do one more rocket, one, two, basically simple as that. And you're just going to rinse and repeat that. Obviously, make sure you stay away from the boss a little bit. Last thing you want is to die to your own dragon's breath. But as you can see, he is uh, well in three phase territory, very easy. Um, if you're having trouble killing enemies to create a sunspot to get restoration, that is what your healing grenade is for. So if you're ever in a pickle where you're getting low or you need to get restoration, you got your healing grenade that you can just chuck on the ground nice and easy. 
pretty much always going to be safe. As far as the cage goes, for the eyes, you always want to work your way from bottom to top. So you're always kind of starting your eyes at the bottom and then moving your way up as your cage goes. So um, now if you follow that uh, rule, I suppose, it'll be a pretty good way to get out of that cage pretty safely. As you can see there, I didn't have a way to get restoration, so I just threw my healing grenade at the ground. And I only got one totem here, but you'll see that my damage is still gonna be pretty solid. So we'll shoot another rocket, get the Pyrogale going, launch it at the boss, does tons of damage. Get one more in there. Probably shouldn't have shot that last one because uh, I'm a little low on ammo, but uh, these guys usually are pretty good about dropping ammo. And even if they're not, you can always skip a DPS phase while you're looking around for heavy. Um, but, you know, as long as you get a brick or two, since you have Solar Scavenger, you get a ton of ammo per brick. See, like, right here, that's a finder brick, and I got two bullets, which is enough for, like, two-thirds of a DPS phase. So you'll be in good shape. So just continue rinse and repeating scavenging ammo. You'll be through this first boss in, like, four or five minutes. Another thing I forgot to mention as I'm going into what I hope is my last DPS phase, um, you definitely want to try to make sure that you're getting throwing hammer kills as you're capturing the totems so that you can maintain Roaring Flames X3 so you have significantly more damage from your super. If you can't, it's not the end of the world, which means you're going to maybe have to do an extra DPS phase, but results in you hitting him significantly harder. Once you kill him, do not sprint onto his body because the rocket will continue to explode and, and you'll die. I've uh, messed up some solo floss runs to that before. Um, but if you can, try and throw on an eager edge sword uh, and scavenge any remaining heavy bricks to make this section a little bit safer and easier to get through. So obviously for this part, the numbers next to the skeletons, the first one that you see is how many clocks you need to be spinning clockwise. Okay, you need to shoot them three times. And then the other number is the ones that need to be spinning counterclockwise. So uh, I'm sure everyone knows how to do this part. Not too problematic. Just like that, and then we're through. Um, even if you know how to do this jail cell part, I do recommend watching this entire section because there is some stuff to look out for that can kill you. So I'm just, my goal is gonna be to show you how to avoid uh, all that jazz. Another thing too, if you wanted to at this stage, you if you wanted to be like ultra safe, you could swap your Pyrogale to line rampants to have uh, be able to like more reliable with your jump for the jumping heavy sections. Uh, or you could go for something like Lorely, so that if you happen to take a big chunk of damage from enemies, then you'll go ahead and get that sunspot. Up to you. I don't find either of them particularly necessary, especially if you know the route. Uh, but extra insurance policy if that sounds like something that you'd like to have. First set of spikes right here, gonna hop over it and just go straight down this hallway. Then we'll take a left. Second set of spikes, just crouch, walk under. And then we got this hole in the wall to our right. Travel through the hole. Once we get out of the hole, take a left. Spikes on this right wall, so we'll hug this left wall. And then we're gonna continue around this corner. Last set of spikes right here. That is the last set of spikes that you should see. If you come across any more spikes, means you've gone the wrong way. So we're just gonna go ahead and make our way down here. Continue following my path. Uh, if I'm going a little too fast for you, you can slow this video down um, and play it at like a quarter speed and watch it side by side um, as you're running through this yourself. Um, and I'd probably recommend that you do kill those ravagers and all these enemies and that kind of stuff. Because, you know, last thing you want is to get perma frozen like I am. Um, I'm just trying not to kill them in the interest of time. Although, funny enough, it's probably costing me more time not killing them uh, for, for the purposes of recording this video than it isn't. I'm also very bad with Titan Jump, so it takes me a while to uh, get through those areas. But once you're through the maze, obviously we're going to come up on the cliffside part where you have some falling rocks. If you've played Warlord's Ruin before, which you probably have if you're attempting self loss or you've seen any of my guide videos, you know that the rocks with no grass or stones on them are the ones that fall. So if you see the ones that are just like a plain blank sheet of white, those are the ones to be careful for. Or I can just point them all out to you as well. The only other one in this section is this bad boy right there, which you can actually skip that area altogether just by jumping straight here. And then we'll work our way up, work our way up again. This is where I love the Eager Edge Sword because I can just swing past this guy and then I'll hop up, 
swing past all these dudes. I'm never really in any danger. I'm past all them before they're even done spawning. And worst case scenario, I have a healing grenade in my pocket as well. So never really in any danger. Big thing to look out for here, this is a falling rock. I like to just try and avoid it altogether by using my sword to fling through there. If you're taking too many shots on the boss, chuck the healing grenade on the ground. You'll be good to go. But once you're through that section, you are basically already at the second boss. Just, I think, two staircases. And we'll hop on up here. As far as the loadout goes for the second boss, um, which, by the way, if you've been enjoying this so far, you feel like it's been helpful, please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. I'd appreciate it a lot. As far as the loadout goes for the second boss, we're literally keeping everything the exact same. Same thing as we have for first boss, same weapons, same subclass setup, same armor mods, same everything. The only thing we're changing is our resistances. So instead of going triple solar, uh, this encounter has a lot of arc damage from the eyes and the boss. And uh, void damage can be a little tough here from the scorn snipers. So we put on one void, two arc. It's the only difference between your loadout from the previous encounter and your loadout here. Staying alive in this encounter is pretty easy as well. All we have to do is shoot that to begin, get our restoration buff up, continue to kill enemies with solar, and then it's up forever and ever. I even like popping my pyrogale right here at the beginning of each wave to absolutely nuke one of the servile minotaurs because uh, they can hurt a pretty decent amount. That'll obviously give me my restoration from the sunspots and my radiant as well when I deal damage with my power of melee. Um, or actually, I think the Radiant is coming from an artifact mod whenever you pop your super. So, even easier way to get Radiant, because obviously, I uh, chucked my hammer at that Servile Mentor and completely missed. I always love going for this dude over here to capture the totems. So, I like to come over and kill the eyes from left to right. You can see that I'm basically in the middle of the battlefield, and it doesn't really matter, because I have a permanent restoration buff. So, for the most part, pretty much invincible as long as you keep that restoration buff. Here, I like to either not touch this guy at all or only put like one fusion shot into him until he spawns his totem. And then the second he spawns his first totem, I'll sit in the first totem while I'm killing him to, uh, of course, make the second from his dead body. In terms of being safe here, once your biting cold stacks hit six, I don't care how close you are to the totem. If it hits six, come back here, drop him, get safe. If that means you're only able to capture one or you miss a phase entirely of totems, so be it. After you capture the totems, I always like to run down here and spawn trap these two scorn snipers. I still have the scorn snipers on the other side, but I love spawn trapping those two right there. And then I'll work my way back across with all the eyes. I leave the far right one up because that is the last one that I want to kill because I want the distance between the final eye and the scorn guy that I want to kill to be as little as possible so I can like spawn camp him basically. Um, but yeah, if you want to be ultra safe, hop up here and kill these two Sworn Snipers up here before you even start doing any of that so that they're not sniping at you while you're running around here killing eyes. And then you're just going to continue killing enemies with solar to keep your restoration up, to keep your radiant up. It's super easy. If you want to be even safer too, you can kill the eyes from this corridor right here. So I can, can kind of hang out there, which I actually do recommend when the boss gets really low HP. Because when the boss gets really low HP, his, uh, his aggro will go up to like 11 and he'll start chasing you around the arena and doing stomps and trying to push you off the map. And it's really, really annoying. So highly recommend being significantly more cautious when the boss is like in berserk mode. Because as a titan with titan jump, it's not nearly as easy to recover from getting flung around the map, especially if you're airborne. So we're going to hang out here. Remember, like I said, once Fighting Cold hits six, I'm immediately back. Drop off the stacks. The uh, You also want to make sure you never jump back and forth between this area because this boss's attacks obviously push you back. So if you're jumping to get from the totems to the safety zone for the storm, if he shoots you with a bolt and he pushes you back, uh, as you can see, you are flying off the map right there. So you always just want to run. And then if you're ever having to sit right here, you can kind of come to the right while still being in the safety. As you can see, I still have shelter from the storm, but this thing is right in front of me, so the boss can't hit me, so I'm super safe. Want to get my restoration of radiant back up, so I'll kill someone with a hammer. That gives me radiant for the hammer damage. It gives me restoration for the sunspot, and then we'll just continue killing stuff. Before I start dunking the balls, I once again like to kill five of the six eyes. 
Um, that way there's a lot less things shooting at me in the arena while I'm dunking the balls. And I make sure not to kill the sixth because I don't want to spawn new scorn bosses and initiate the storm again. I also want to make sure that no matter what, I kill all the scorn snipers in the arena. There's going to be two on each side. You do not want them shooting at you while you're in the middle of the DPS phase. So please make sure you kill all of the scorn snipers before you start dunking the balls and getting ready for DPS. Obviously, I spawn camp the other two on bright side already, so I don't really have to worry about them. So we're going to run over here. Side note as well, as I get into this, um, having high intellect really, really helps here for getting off multiple pyro gills in one DPS phase. So if you can get high intellect without sacrificing tier 10 resilience, I highly recommend you do that because it could be the difference between one pyro gale per DPS phase and two pyro gales per DPS phase. Another thing I recommend doing is trying to make sure that you not only maintain your radiant and restoration buffs by getting kills on enemies in between dunking the balls, but also try to maintain your Roaring Flames times three by getting a couple of hammer ability kills right as you go into DPS phase. That way, when you fire your Pyro Gale at the boss right at the beginning of the DPS phase, it is a Roaring Flames times three buffed Pyro Gale as opposed to an unbuffed one to make a really big difference. So I'll go ahead and refresh my Roaring Flames right there since I'm about to enter the DPS phase. Make sure there's no Acolytes left. I can refresh it one more time. We're going to show my second DPS phase, because my first DPS phase was absolutely atrocious. So start with a rocket, insta-pop the Pyro Gale. One, two, then we can probably do a new rocket. One, two, three, four, another rocket, rinse and repeat. And hopefully, if you spend enough time outside of the plates, maybe you can like run up and kill enemies, run around and scavenge ammo, um, as long as you're always monitoring your biting gold stacks you can hopefully get a little bit of extra super energy to be able to get a second Pyrogale off. You can also, if a Thrall runs up to you, you can throw your Throwing Hammer to get Radiant. Or you could throw your Throwing Hammer straight at the boss and get Radiant that way. As you can see right here, I only have two Dragon's Breath shots left, so I'm actually going to run around the arena and pick up some ammo before I get to my next plate, because I do want to make sure I have plenty of Dragon's Breath before I start shooting at the boss again. I want to make the most out of every single plate. That also gives me a little bit more time to charge up my Pyrogale so I can get a second Pyrogale in. Four, shoot rocket. One, two, three, and then that's it for that. And then I know I saw some heavy bricks up here, so I can scavenge these real quick. Really pays dividends to know where your heavy bricks are. So boom, there's our second Pyrogale that we can get off. Shoot another rocket. And I don't know where his health was at before, but I'm pretty sure I did like 55, 60% of his HP in this single DPS phase right there. So if you are really spot on, on the money, you got decent intellect and you're able to get two, you're able to get two Pyrogales off in each phase and you're able to always be firing Dragon's Breath, always be firing off your fusion rifle, having plenty of ammo, scavenging it in between plates. Um, then it's you, like you can two-phase the boss, um, but even if you can't, it's not the end of the world. It makes for a very easy, comfortable three-phase that you're not having to sweat in uh, or anything like that, which is equally fine. So a flawless run, probably only, only gonna do this once, doing three phases instead of two, not the end of the world. Don't greed for it, take your time. You'll get through this encounter super, super easily. What I was talking about before with the boss getting lower and getting significantly more aggressive, once he gets to that point, it can really, do you a lot of good to instead of kind of playing really really aggressive out here in the arena and running up and hitting the eyes because you're just kind of asking them to charge into you play under this middle section and just kill the eyes from here even with an smg you have plenty of range to do that it's much safer and then once you have five of the eyes down then you can go out and get the sixth as you're making your way over to the guy that way you just kind of avoid getting shoved off the edge by the boss or something like that. A lot safer. Once you kill him, pretty much staying the exact same loadout. Again, you can switch to Lorely or Lion Rampants if you want to be a little bit more safe, either with healing or with jumping. Also going to go back to that eager edge. Only difference here is I like to throw on a long range weapon for this section. You'll see why in a moment. It really makes things significantly safer for one of the upcoming parts that we're arriving on. Uh, but for now, you can run around and scavenge some eager edge ammo, get topped off on that sword if you'd like um you'll be good to go
So we're gonna make our way through here. This part's pretty easy, although we do have a section coming up that is deceptively dangerous in like 10 seconds. So I do want to point that out. So make our way through here, get up to the top real fast. And then as you exit this section, you'll come out to the, oops, wrong way, huh? You'll come out to these enemies, which you kill nice and simply. Incandescent primary really works wonders here because you just get the Scorch going and then everything explodes. Um, but right here, after you exit this group of enemies, you'll come left. You want to be careful because you're going to have a falling rock right here. So be careful of that. But this Screeb, let him do his thing. When he jumps across, do not immediately start going because if he decides he wants to jump back, if he collides with you, on his way back, his momentum will send you flying the other direction. So wait until he takes a sweet time going up the hill, and then you'll come around, take a quick turn left, be nice and safe. Don't rush that. It's like an extra five seconds. Just chill, take your time. Dying to that is the worst possible way to end your soul falls run. Believe me, I would know. <laughs> After we kill some of these uh, first thrall and whatnot, kill all those wizards. That way we're not dealing with the constant spawn of thrall. And then this is where the long range weapon comes in very nicely is that we can kill those dangerous wizards before we even start jumping. And the trick with this section is basically just always hugging the right side. If you're always hugging the right side wall, none of these rocks will ever hit you. So just kind of stay on the right, stay on the right. The only caveat is that from this jump, things can get slightly more dangerous. And this is why I highly recommend you have an eager red sword right here. You wanna wait doing this jump because there is a set of rocks that come right here that can potentially hit you. There's a rock that'll come straight underneath this one right here. Um, it's about to pass, so I'll show you what to look for. I believe it's this one right there. It's that one that just passed right there. Once that one and the one afterwards passes, then you're good to go ahead and start jumping. Make sure you're quick with that jump though as that is a falling platform that you'll jump to. Also, if these enemies right here, you can completely ignore them if you want to. Let's pull out your long range weapon. I highly recommend you rewatch that part, by the way, if that was a little fast for you, just so you know exactly what I'm talking about, because that is definitely the most dangerous part in this section. Once you're here, you'll wait until this blast goes off. Once it goes off, you're gonna jump and aim for this right here. Then you can jump up onto this rock. And then I like to wait a little bit until the rocks go. You don't necessarily have to. I don't think you're gonna get hit by them, but you know, why not? You can wait until they pass. You'll just get like really high up and kind of do like a nice arcing jump to get onto that section right there. Once you're done with that, you can actually go ahead and put away the bow or you can keep it on. I like having the wish ender on actually. It's probably gonna be better to keep the wish ender on or go wither horde. I'll show you why in a moment. Um, this section, if you're fast enough, you have the eager edge sword. You can skip past all of these enemies, or if you want to take things slow and be really safe, you can go ahead and fight them. It's up to you either way. I like skipping past them, at least for the interest of time. So we'll continue heading up here. Just follow my exact path. And go ahead and whack this guy with our hammer. Take a little jump, little eager edge, another hammer. You can take your time with those guys too. You can probably just hit him with Wish Ender. Probably safer to hit him with Wish Ender, but I like to go a little quickly. Careful here, falling rock as you approach this section. And also be careful because right around this corner is a phalanx. I like having the Wish Ender or Wither Horde because you can hit the phalanx through his shield. He didn't put a shield up there, but since the Wish Ender has built an anti-barrier, you can do that. And with Wither Horde, you can stick them and it'll do the same thing. Alternatively, you can just have your sword out and be ready to do a sword swipe right as you round the corner, just in case he blasts you. Either way, you'll be good though. Once I get to here, I like to hammer one of these guys start making my sunspot, get my buffs, and just kind of hang out. I like to play this left side rock. Treat this section like an actual encounter because these enemies are dangerous. You got the boss firing at you. Um, Phalanx is blasting at you. A lot of tanky, tank it, uh, taking enemies. Don't treat this section lightly. It'd be a brutal way to see your solo flawless go. You could also, if you wanted to, before you start this section, at the second encounter, you could take off your fire gale, go to Lorley and swap your super to throwing hammers. I think throwing hammers would probably make this section a little bit easier. Um, or you can take it nice and slow like I am. Pop this, Pyregale will 
nuke both of these knights. And then you're pretty much done. That's it. Make your way up these stairs. Sometimes I notice that enemies spawn on these stairs. Other times they don't. I don't really know what makes them spawn or what makes them not spawn. Seems like I don't have them this time. If you do have them, take your time. Kill them all on your way up. Don't rush through it. Don't try and jump over them. Don't try and eat your head sword past them. Shake your time. Go slow. You'll be good. Now, for the final boss, Titan is definitely the slowest at killing the final boss, but it is by far the safest and easiest to stay alive. For the final boss, we're actually ditching Solar, and we're going to go to Strand. For Strand, I like going Heart of Inmost Light. If you have a different exotic that you think would work a little bit better, go nuts. I don't think the Heart of Inmost Light is particularly important to this. You could probably go Armamentarium if you wanted to. You could go something else. I just, for me, it felt the best in this situation, but the exotic's not particularly important. Our weapons are also switching a little bit too. We're keeping this fusion rifle that we've had on the entire time, but we're gonna go ahead and throw on Sunshot for our exotic weapon because it is absolutely ace at keeping the field clear of adds, making sure that nothing is ever up to hurt us. It's fantastic. Our heavy then will go from Dragon's Breath to being Apex Predator. Main reason being is that I don't really like using Dragon's Breath unless I'm on Solar because Emperor of Ashes really does make it significantly better when it comes to DPSing bosses. So any auto-loading rocket here works fine. Reconstruction Bait and Switch Apex is probably the best if you have it. Um, I've seen people use Cataclysmic. Uh, I've seen pe people use um, Briars also from Red of Nightmares. I personally like the rocket the most, but it's up to you. If you'd rather use one of those, go nuts. Similarly with the Fusion Rifle, I've seen people use the Supremacy with Rewind Rounds and Kinetic Tremors. If you want to go with that, go nuts, or you can go with this Fusion Rifle that I'm using here. It's a craftable one. Up to you. As far as our Strand Loadout, super obviously only one option there. Um, Shackle Grenade is massive here because you can suspend the dude that you have to melee that might melee you back for the debuff. And obviously if you suspend him in the melee him, he can't do anything. So it, it makes transferring that debuff the safest on any of the classes full stop. There's also another way to make transferring the debuff even safer. I'll show you once we get into that. For your aspects, Banner of Warren into the fray. Gonna make it so that you always have healing, woven mail, melee damage bonuses, and melee charges. Um, and then for our aspects here, we've got continuity for longer suspend for that, um, the immune uh, wraith enemy that you're transferring the buff to. Warding, so you get woven mail for ord pickups. Fury, so that when you do tangle damage, you get melee energy. That's help you get more melee kills to keep Banner of War up. And generation, so that you get grenade energy whenever you deal damage. That's more shackle grenades. As far as mods go, our mods are staying mostly the same. We're keeping a solar siphon because we have sunshot and we're keeping heavy ammo finder. We're going solar loader for the sunshot, impact induction to get more grenades. Uh, same thing with the solar weapon surge and solar scavenger since our DPS weapons are solar. And same thing with the reaper, time dilation, and bomber. Only thing that's changing on the chest is that instead of having two arc resistances and two voids, it's primarily void damage in this fight, specifically from the boss. So we're going two voids and one arc. Other than that, that's about it. Like I said, if you want to go something other than the Apex, uh, or sorry, other than the Heart of Inmost Light, you can. Up to you. I like Heart of Inmost Light for this. It's just what I found to work best. Um, either way. So for this, we start the fight by meleeing a dude to get our Banner of War buff. That'll also make a Tangle, which we can throw to just obliterate a pack of enemies. And then we'll just one tap all of the Scions can also use your shackle grenade on the wizards so that they pose absolutely no threat to you. As you can see, clearing the arena on Strand Titan is an actual cakewalk. You can also pick up your tangles, throw them directly at the boss, and it'll kill pretty much all of the eyes. Depends what floor you're on. Uh, sometimes it'll kill four, sometimes it'll kill five. If you're lucky, depending on the placement, it'll kill all six. Um, makes it even easier. Not that killing the eyes is too much of a concern anyway, because it's on shot. All you have to do is shoot the middle one on each side and it blows up everything. But yeah, go ahead and kill all the eyes. We're going to keep the Scions at bay. One shot into a pack kills the entire pack, thanks to Sunshot. And then we're going to go ahead and chip away at these dudes. Obviously, you don't want to kill them. You want to wait until they put down a totem. The second they put down a totem, you can burn them down with your fusion rifle or with, uh, with your melee charges, anything like that. Then I love to put a shield down here. One, because it soaks a lot of the damage from the boss. And two, if this guy walks through the shield, he basically gets blinded. It's basically the equivalent of a blind. Once I capture both of the totems and I pass the buff, 
I like to come up here for damage because I don't want to deal with the scions downstairs. I then like to get four shots off with Sunshot to get the Radiant buff through the Artifact mod. I'll shoot one shot of the Fusion Rifle to proc bait and switch on my rocket, three shots with the Fusion to account for the time that it takes to auto-load the rocket for reconstruction, and then a couple more Fusion shots. That is one floor of my damage. After I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and fly back down here, kill a Scion to get my Banner of War back, and then I basically pick up ammo, rinse and repeat the process. Um, as you can see there, I didn't even have to use my suspend grenade, my shackle grenade, to uh, suspend the enemy that I had to melee. But I'll show you what it looks like right here if we do decide to do that. But I love this because you can either use your barricade to make that enemy unable to pass the buff back to you because they're disoriented or blinded or whatever it is, or you can use your shackle grenade to suspend them and then they can't even move at all. There's no way they can pass the buff back to you. You'll notice I'm not really using my super here either much. Um, my super for me is my panic button in this encounter. It is entirely possible that you'll go through your entire solo flawless run and not use your super a single time during this boss fight. That's fine. That's not a problem. I highly recommend against using it on the boss because for whatever reason, I've had it where I've used it on the boss before and it seemed to bug out and I got like stomped by the boss and insta-killed. Don't know why, but I recommend not really using your super there. We're then gonna once again run up here. I recommend taking that kind of like sweeping route because if you run directly through the other guy and the boss, they'll stomp at you and it can just make it a little more dangerous. So I highly recommend that sweeping route that I took. And then we're just kind of strafing back and forth. Two rockets, two, three, another rocket. Definitely make sure you're careful. If you get chipped away a little bit, back off. My strafium is kind of bad right there, so that's why I was taking a lot of heat. And then we'll hop back down, melee a dude. That gets us our banner of war. Go ahead and recollect all of our ammo. I'm rinsing and repeating the process. One more time, that route, by the way, you'll be tempted to run up to the platform by just going straight through here and climbing up the void balls through here. Problem is the boss is right there and the other Squirren dude is going to be right here, so they're both going to stomp you. Makes it really dangerous to jump and make your way up there. The route I went instead was I like to go left of this pillar and then left of this pillar. I like that route a lot better. Feels significantly safer for running up here, and it's so easy to get through the totems and pass the buff quickly because of all the resources that you have to basically shut down that melee enemy that you have so much time to take that... Uh, to use extra time to take that uh, little bonus route to make sure that you're just a little bit safer. I'm gonna go ahead and suspend right here because I definitely do not want this wizard shooting at me and I do not have Banner of War up. These wizards are the one thing that can basically one-shot you. So definitely be careful of them, definitely respect them. Um, looks like I still don't have Banner of War up somehow. I thought I killed something with melee, but apparently not. Another thing uh, you could do in this situation is you could pop super and kill the enemies with your super to get your banner of war up. Um, or you can just be a little patient, wait for a scion to push up, either way. One thing you do not want to do though is charge in when there is a wizard up, unless you know the wizard's position and you know that they're in a position that makes it safe to charge up. But yeah, you'll be good to go. So we'll kill those eyes. I'm gonna wait for one more waves of scions to spawn so I can nuke all the scions down real quick before I uh, bring on the big guys. So we'll just tag all these scions up and then I know I can kill that other eye. I like to kill this left one and I like to play this rock right here while I'm killing him. It kind of makes it so that he can't really hit you with his gun and it makes you pretty safe from stomps. And then once he puts his totem down, looks like he put it up up top, which is kind of annoying, but we'll still be able to get both of them. So here's our friend. We'll go ahead and suspend him, punch him in the face and we're good to go. And then once I get up here, so I'm not getting lasered by everything, I'll just go ahead and throw up the barricade while I'm capturing the second totem. And then once I capture the second totem, I can run over here and just get ready for DPS. Once again, it's going to be four shots with the hand cannon to get radiant from the artifacts. One, two, three, four. One to proc bait and switch. Double rocket. One, two, three. Another rocket. And then you can get like two, maybe three more fusion rifle shots in immediately when I'm done, I like to hop down here because I do not want to start the DPS phase on that plate. So I'll hop down here, melee a Scion to 
to get my Banner of War buff back. And that's huge because having Banner of War allows you to stay up here for significantly more time because you can kill the Scions, or sorry, kill the Eyeballs to increase the Banner of War duration, which also increases your DPS duration because these plates stop letting you DPS or letting you do DPS once all of the eyes are up. Once all the eyes are up, you go ahead and hop down, get situated, collect some ammo if you can, and then go ahead and hop back up and get ready to go ahead and go again. One, two, three, four, proc the buff, boom, two rockets. And then after I shoot my two rockets, I like to go ahead and shoot some of the eyes. Always good to have your hand cannon fully loaded. But as you can see, you get a ton of damage in. And you can hop off these plates and take as much time as you want before you go to the next place. Like I can run down here, I can collect a bunch of heavy ammo. I can run down even to the first area and collect heavy ammo. Just so I have as many rockets as humanly possible before I jump up and do the next DPS phase. The one issue with that is that it means your Banner of War is probably going to run out and there's not really a reliable way to reacquire Banner of War before you go onto the third plate because it's not really smart to run up and try and melee one of those eyes. So that is the one issue. But if you have like zero rockets, I'd say it's probably better to go ahead and run down and try and get at least one. So I'm going to go ahead and put my barricade down here, actually, so I'm a little safer. Kill the eyes so I have a little bit more time for damage. And I failed to kill the eyes on the other side, so that's all the damage I get. Like I said before, definitely not as good of damage as you get on a Hunter or a Warlock, because Hunter, you get Lucky Pants Malfeasance, and it's just a ton of damage. And on Warlock, you get to sit, sit in a Well of Radiance and point blank the boss and not have to worry about any of the adds. Titan doesn't really get any of those luxuries. Um, but the one luxury Titan does get is that it is by far the safest class to do this on. So even though, yes, you're going to have to do probably a couple of extra DPS phases compared to the other classes, you're going to be very, very safe and borderline impossible to kill going into those DPS phases. Just make sure you're always playing smart, using your hand cannon to clear the packs of Scions, using your barricade and your shackle grenades to keep yourself safe from enemies and to transfer the buff to the immune guy, and using your shackle grenades and respecting the damage of the solar wizards, that's fun. Uh, other than that, rinse and repeat a couple times until you're done, and then you'll be on the final phase, which I'll fast forward to and show you right now. Now, once you get the boss nice and weak, you're about to go into final stand. This is uh, right here in my third phase. This is about how much time it took me. Right when you get him into final stand health territory, don't even, I'm not gonna lie, don't even bother staying up here. Turn around 180 degrees, instantly just hop off the tower, get out of there. You wanna do it as safe as humanly possible. I'm not even gonna recommend any other strategy. I'm not even gonna recommend staying up there. Take your time with your jumps, okay? <laughs> you do not wanna mess up these jumps. And worst case scenario, if you do mess up the jumps, remember you have your uh, melee ability on Titan to go ahead and swipe your way back. So if you're like, you know, if you're jumping up here and you're like, oops, I messed up. You got your melee, Titan melee ability. Take your time on these jumps. That goes for when you're jumping across the balls to do DPS as well. Um, you can just run up here and damage the boss. However, you'll probably notice that right here, he's immune. You have to be standing on these platforms right here. As you can see, once I'm up here, I get Naeem's Wish Empowerment. That will then allow me to damage the boss. I can damage him all the way from over here safe as can be can't even put a bullet into me impossible for him to hit me once you get to that stage as long as you can get up here without dying to jumping your solo flawless is literally in the bag all you gotta do is chill up here shoot a couple rockets reload my rocket and if you run out of rockets you run out of ammo you don't have long range weapons to kill him uh my recommendation is just slapping on polaris lance and holding left click it'll take you a second but It'll get the job done. And while I'm lasering away, I hope this guide was helpful. If you're looking to do it on a different class, a little bit faster on the other classes, and it might be easier on the other classes for you if you're more comfortable with those classes. However, if you would say you're equally as good with all three of the classes, I would say Titan's probably your best bet. Please do me a favor, like and subscribe to the video if this helped you in any way, shape, or form to get solo flawless. Um, you can also pop your super here to fly across and get the loot. Hopefully it helps. 
always trying to make guide videos and build videos and whatnot help you guys accomplish stuff in destiny and get better at destiny um i'll see you in the live stream hopefully twitch.tv slash mactic stop by so you can learn more stuff live thank you so much for watching as always have a great day